After taking the town of Avericum and massacring 40,000 Gaelic people, Caesar allowed his legions a few days to rest within the walls of the conquered town. Although he was able to resupply his diminished food sources with Avericum's stored grain and bring the two legions that had remained in winter quarters along with their supplies, feeding more than 50,000 men every day meant that food would not last long. Caesar contacted the Adui, ordering their new chieftain, a man of his choosing named Convicto Litavis, to place 10,000 Adui warriors along his supply route to protect his incoming shipments. Afterwards, the warriors were then to meet with Caesar's forces in Gagovia. Before marching south, Caesar split his ten legions. Four of them he sent north, under the command of Titus Labienus, to prevent northern Gaul from joining the rebellion. The remaining six legions marched with Caesar towards the hometown of Vercingetorix. Hoping to slow Caesar's progress towards Gagovia, Vercingetorix's forces destroyed all the bridges along the Alave River, running between Avericum and the lands of the Arverni. At the small town of Varennes, where one of the bridges destroyed by Vercingetorix had stood, Caesar camped his legions. During the night, Caesar divided his forces into thirds. Two thirds he ordered to march out of camp the following morning, arranged so as to appear the whole of Caesar's army. As two-thirds of Caesar's legions marched south along the river in search of a place to cross, Vercingetorix's Gaelic army shadowed him on the opposite side. Once the armies were out of sight, the final third of Caesar's army got to work, quickly building a bridge to cross the Elave. After marching the whole day, Caesar's mobile units camped, and Vercingetorix's men did the same. However, in the middle of the night, Caesar's men quickly snuck out of camp, Heading back towards the previous camp, gaining a night on Vercingetorix, Caesar's forces were able to cross the river Elave before Vercingetorix had time to return and prevent air crossing. Anticipating Caesar's destination, Vercingetorix moved his forces to the town of Gagovia. Sitting atop a plateau that was a mile and a half long by a third of a mile wide, Gagovia, amidst mountainous regions, looked down from 1,200 feet onto the plains below. When Caesar arrived, he realised Gagovia was going to be even more difficult to take than had been Avericum. With a frontal assault too much of a risk, Caesar studied the surrounding terrain. He finally located a hill which, being their main source for water and grain, was essential to Gagovia. Waiting until the middle of the night, Caesar took a mobile raiding force and quickly defeated the surprise Gauls protecting the hill. Making a second camp on the newly taken hill, Caesar then ordered a ditch, 12 feet wide, that connected his new camp to that of his main army. Now Caesar controlled the water and grain supply, and cut Gagovia off. Camped outside Gagovia, waiting for Vercingetorix to make his next move, Caesar received bad news. The 10,000 Adui horsemen who had been tasked with guarding his incoming grain shipments had begun attacking the legions escorting the shipments. Caesar took four of his legions, leaving behind a skeleton crew of two legions to maintain the siege, and marched off in the direction of his supply lines. When he came across the Adui, he surrounded them. The Dewey then told Caesar that the pro-Gaelic faction had gained control of the forces and, being told that the Romans were indiscriminately slaughtering Gauls, responded defensively. But now, with the arrival of Caesar, the pro-Roman Dewey had regained control of their warriors and were ready to serve. Whether or not Caesar believed the story is unclear. At the town of Avericum, Caesar did allow the indiscriminate slaughter of Gaelic peoples, but he was also not in a position to expend much time on the Adui, while his limited forces attempted to hold Gagovia. Ordering the Adui forces to remain with him, where he could also keep an eye on them, Caesar and his four legions returned to the siege. When Caesar returned to Gagovia the following day, much had already changed. From the moment he marched off with four legions, Vercingetorix's forces attacked the remaining two legions left to hold the siege. As they were occupied defending themselves throughout the entire day and into the night, Vercingetorix's men had taken several other hilltops surrounding the city, moving them into a better position to flank Caesar's army. Additionally, the Gauls had built a six-foot-high wall in front of Gagovia. 
Unless he could lure Vercingetorix's army from the high ground, Caesar could not take the city. As he had done at the river Elave, Caesar tried to trick Vercingetorix into giving up his fortified position. Sending cavalry into the hills, Caesar instructed them to harass and harry the various camps, but not outright attack. Seeing that his cavalry had successfully drawn the attention of the Gaelic army, Caesar ordered them to ride out again the following day, accompanied by one full legion. This time his forces deployed for battle against the Gauls encamped on the hills. Vercingetorix, believing he had forced Caesar's hand into premature battle, moved his forces to intercept him in the hills. While Vercingetorix and the brunt of his forces were engaged against Caesar's legions in the hills, Caesar quietly moved his remaining legions forward. Boosting one another over the six-foot wall, Caesar's forces took the Gauls by surprise, and chaos ensued. Vercingetorix, realising once again that he had been tricked by Caesar, abandoned the hills, charging his forces back to Gagovia to protect his forces at the city's gates. Caesar, seeing the Gaelic army racing back towards his men, sounded the general retreat. Unfortunately, in the chaos of battle, half of his forces did not hear the trumpet and remained in the thick of the fighting. Before long, they realised they were alone and outnumbered, the rest of Caesar's forces having fallen back. Taking heavy losses as they did so, the men who had been left in the battle pulled back, fighting their way toward the safety of camp. Caesar had lost. Vercingetorix had successfully defended the town of Gagovia from invasion by Roman forces. This was just the rallying cry Gaul needed to win over the last of the tribes sitting on the fence. In the dead of night, following Caesar's failure to take the city, the pro-Roman Adui cavalry rode off. As they made their way back through central Gaul, spreading the word of Vercingetorix's victory, Romans were found and murdered, signifying Adui's alliance with Rome at its end. In response to Vercingetorix's victory at Gagovia, more Gaelic cavalry arrived from tribes throughout Gaul, increasing his forces by approximately 15,000 more men. Caesar withdrew from the siege, and began marching his forces towards the Adui, and out of Arverni lands. Vercingetorix pursued, attempting to use his cavalry to hit Caesar's marching columns, but Caesar's forces were able to repel the attacks. Once Caesar's legions met up with those legions under the command of Titus Labienus, Caesar wrote to the Senate, informing them that the over-eagerness of his men had been the cause for their not hearing the retreat had sounded. As he blamed his men for the loss of Gagovia, he also reported to the Senate that it had cost them the lives of 700 men, although modern estimates place Caesar's losses much higher than he was willing to admit. As the 52 BC weather warmed and fodder for local farm animals became abundant, Caesar used the fodder to augment his men's rations, helping to alleviate their constant state of hunger. When word came to Caesar that another Gaelic army was marching once again toward the town of Narbo in Roman Transalpine Gaul, Caesar ignored it. Refusing to chase around one army after another, he knew the only way to break Gaul was to defeat Vercingetorix. Writing to those Germanic tribes from across the Rhine River who were still loyal to Caesar, he requested they loan him cavalry with which he might counterbalance Vercingetorix's increased forces. The German tribes agreed, and Caesar received a few thousand horsemen to replace a portion of what he had lost when the Adui abandoned him. Finally, ready to continue the war, Caesar, alongside Titus Labienus, ten legions and allied German cavalry, began marching his forces south. The young Arverni king, whose name was becoming synonymous with Gaul's independence, had withdrawn his troops to Elysia. To pacify Gaul once and for all, Caesar was ready to break Vercingetorix.